Good morning, church. God is good. And all the time. Church, the Bible teaches in Luke eleven forty one, Give alms and everything will be forgiven for you. This is the Jesus himself speaking. Can we repeat it together? Give alms. This is the reason why we offer so many opportunities here at St. Walter to help the poor and the suffering. This weekend is our annual stewardship of service campaign that we were not able to have in the last three years because of that pandemic. In 2019, our last one, almost a thousand of our parishioners signed up to help out these local charities by donating time, time, to the poor and the suffering. Can you please pass the papers and pencils at the end of the pews? One per family, please. I will now read the first page. <clears throat> Stewardship of Service Opportunities, Fall 2022. The first one is Exodus World Services. Opportunities to volunteer are individuals for individuals, families, and small groups. Such services as collecting and delivering essentials to the new families as they arrive, visiting with families to answer questions about life in the United States, and offering help with setting up house or homework for students. We can put you in touch. The next one is Rudrusel Food Pantry. Sorting and shelving food products that have been donated to the pantry. The pantry has been providing food to our neighbors in Rusel, Bloomingdale, and Medina since 2014. They believe that we are called by God to care for each other, especially those in need. The products that they supply are beyond the essentials. In addition, they offer fresh vegetables, fresh bread, and quality meats. The Humanitarian Service Project, our third, sorting and packing Christmas gifts and food. The mission of the Humanitarian Service Project is to alleviate the pain and suffering that Poverty brings to children, elderly, and families in the DuPage and King counties. Gifts for children at Christmas and birthdays is one of their original projects. Phil's Friends, which is very popular among our young families. This is making cards and putting together care packages for cancer patients. Phil's Friends is dedicated to providing Christ-centered support and hope to those affected by cancer. They have been sending hope to cancer patients for more than 15 years. We can assist by volunteering our own time. No need to check or decide today, St. Walter. Do that with your family this week. We just want you to write your name, email, and phone, and we will connect you within two weeks. We believe that even the very act of signing up is an act of trust and worship that pleases the heart of God. Let me leave you some time to do that right now. Please print your name, email, and phone. There's limited opportunities this year because still of the pandemic. So not everyone will be placed. We apologize for this early on. Now can I ask you to please fold and cut the paper. Fold and cut the paper.
Church, can we please all rise and turn towards the crucifix as we offer these gifts to the Lord? Please lift up your piece of paper to the cross and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you very much for all your blessings. But most of all, I thank you for giving us Jesus as the great servant of all. Make me more like him in serving people around me, most especially the poor and the suffering. Please bless all the charities in our vicinities. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated and the ushers will now collect it. Thank you, everyone. Can you please tell the person sitting beside you, you are blessed. You are blessed. This weekend is the end of our homily series called the 2022 Fall Stewardship Series. The three responses of gratitude. Can we say them all together? 2022 <laughs> Abundance Spirituality Series. The three responses of gratitude. This is patterned after Fo Francis' family recommendation to always practice the words in the family, the words thank you, please, and I'm sorry. What are those three words? I preached four weeks ago about thank you, and three weeks ago, Father Bino ple preached about the word please. This weekend, the last of our homily series, we talk about the word that is also so important in the family, in our relationships, and in our community, and with our relationship with God. That is the word, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Church, did you notice that when I said that you and I are swimming in the Pacific Ocean of God's blessings, that that ocean is also the ocean of God's mercy. You and I are swimming in the Pacific Ocean of God's mercy. There is no blessing in our life that is not from the great magnitude and depth of the ocean of God's mercy. Can we read that together? There is no blessing that is not the great language that of the ocean your life and breath your food and shelter your family and friends your dreams and hopes and every second of our life comes from the ocean of god's mercy and we are the recipients of it as god's stewards God's stewards. Can you tell the person beside you, you are God's steward? You are God's steward. When you realize that you are the product of the ocean of mercy of God, you will also start being a river, a river of God's mercy for others. You cannot help but share your blessings. When I am tempted to be mean, to other people because they are mean to me, especially when I drive around Roselle. I see you. <laughs> I'm like, who's driving that crazy? I'm like, oh, from the 11 o'clock mass. I do not reach to the goodness that is in me. 
I reach out to the goodness of God, the ocean of God's mercy, so I can love them with God's mercy, not mine. Remember when Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. Can we repeat those powerful words? Love. He didn't say love one another as you love yourself. Ha! Because oftentimes we don't know how to love ourselves. And often we love with an empty love tank. An empty love tank. Church, the family is the first school of mercy. Can we say that together? The family. If your family member is here, tell them you are the first school of mercy. For it is there that mercy must be graciously thought, generously modeled, especially by parents, and lovingly caught by children. It was my dad who modeled patience to me. It was my mom who modeled generosity to me. Together with my grandparents, my parents celebrated and modeled the mercy of God. When my dad would make a mistake in our relationship, he was not afraid to say, I'm sorry, even in his 80s. This was huge for us Asians, especially Filipinos, because we see our father as God. Fathers are not supposed to be humbled. They are supposed to be obeyed. Huh? But yet, it was the humility of my dad that taught me the humility of God. For me, my dad was at his greatest when he says, I'm sorry. I caught that from my dad. I remember one time I confronted him about something and, and, and you know, I had a loud voice and, and, and bad temper at that time. And you know, all of a sudden, when I was waiting for my dad's response, he said, without even thinking, he, did, he does not call me Mario. He calls me by my pet name. And when he mentioned my pet name, he said, I'm so sorry. It's my fault. You know, my heart went from DEFCON 5 to DEFCON 1. 1 1.0. And then what did I say? Dad, you want some ribs? <laughs> Church, I acknowledge that it is so hard to say I'm sorry. No wonder we have started this homily series with the words thank you and please. Without the discipline and the attitude of gratitude and respect, I tell you, you cannot say I'm sorry. This is where the grace of God comes in. Without asking for God's grace and mercy, you cannot do this. Because forgiveness is not our default. The default of humanity is always revenge. An eye for an eye. A tooth for a tooth. We need always to reach out to that divine mercy whose name is Jesus. Especially when our hearts are broken and bleeding because somebody has hurt us. Church, one last thing. A lot of people try to change their lives by changing their behavior. Generally, it does not work because they think that the battle is at the outside. It is not. Both victory and failure are an inside job. Let me say that again. Both victory and failure are an inside job. 
Here's the truth. You don't change your life by changing your behavior. You change your life by changing your beliefs. Let me repeat that again. Such truth in psychology and in behavior modification. You don't change your life by changing your behavior. You change your life by changing your beliefs. That is one of the core principles of Alcoholics Anonymous. Once you change your beliefs, you change your behavior because behavior flows from beliefs. Today, I'm asking you to believe that you are so blessed. Today, I'm asking you to believe that you are swimming in the Pacific Ocean of God's blessings. Today, I want you to believe that there is always mercy for you. Today, I want you to believe that you are a beloved child of God. Today, I want you to believe that you are unconditionally loved, despite of what you have done or what will you be doing. Today, I want you to believe that you are worthy of love. Today, I want you to believe that you can love somebody because you have been loved immensely and profoundly by Jesus Christ. Can we just bow our heads in prayer? So many of us are hungry today for God's mercy. The world is hungry for God's mercy. Your loved ones, your family, your friends are hungry for God's mercy. If your loved one is here, please hold their hand. Let's be a river of God's mercy to the world, church. And say this with me, God of mercy, you are my father, and I am your beloved child. Thank you that today and forever, you have given me divine mercy, Jesus himself. Please give me the grace to share this with others, especially to my family. This is my prayer. In your sweet name, amen.